Hello everybody, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today I'm continuing the study of the book of Acts, and I'm going to pick up where I left off last time, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Now if you have not seen all the previous studies on Acts, uh, they're all uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, so I urge you to watch this study from the beginning. But right now, I'm not going to try to attempt to uh, give you any context. I'm just going to pick up where I left off with verse 24. First in the KJV, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry uh, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to, the, to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So let me stop there with verse 28. So that's 24 through 28. Uh, Paul's saying goodbye to Ephesus. Um, he's in his um, first missionary journey, and he saying he doesn't expect to see them again, or they won't see him again. Um, so he probably is very much aware that when he goes to Jerusalem, that the troubles are going to begin, uh, that you know he'll be arrested and he'll go on and uh, um, uh, eventually to Rome and eventually to his uh, execution. So I assume he's aware of his, his future at least in a general way, and uh, so he's saying his goodbyes to them and encouraging them. But to me, well, let me read this entire portion in the Amplified before I comment further. Verse 24 through 28. Um, well, let me start with verse 23, because you can see that uh, he's prophesying here also about his, uh, his imprisonment. Verse 23, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly and emphatically affirms to me in city after city that imprisonment and suffering await me. But I do not consider my life as something of value or dear to me, so that I may with joy finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify faithfully of the good news of God's precious, undeserved grace, which makes us free of the guilt of sin and grants us eternal life. Uh, that's just 20, verse 23 and 24. There's a lot of important things in there. Uh, so he's he doesn't consider his life as something of value or dear to him. He's not worried about, uh, you know, protecting his life or having a long life. He's, he's, his priority is to preach the gospel, to tell people the good news that salvation is offered to all of mankind is a free gift from Jesus. And you receive it, uh, this gift of salvation, the, the promise of eternal life in the kingdom of God. You receive it at the moment you put your faith in the Savior Jesus. When a person concludes that they cannot get to heaven through religious works, they cannot get to, to, to heaven through their establishing their own righteousness, and they understand that the only means of salvation is to receive it as a gift from Jesus. When they believe that and rely on Jesus for their salvation, at that very instant, they receive the gift of salvation, they receive eternal life, and it is irrevocable um, and irreversible by God or by by us. Uh, God
God promises that no way will he ever take back your salvation once you put your faith in Jesus. And scriptures tell us that there's nothing that we can do to screw it up. We, uh, if we um, backslide into sinful lives, if we even lose our faith, that the Bible says that even though we have no faith, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. So it's comforting to know that salvation is not a process of the, and something, to, a prize to be earned as a reward for good behavior throughout our lifetime. Uh, no, it's a, it's a uh, received in an instant and, it, and once we put our faith in Jesus and nothing can ever change it or take it away from us. So this is what he's preaching and this is what he's, uh, his life is dedicated uh, towards spreading the gospel and he knows that um, he's going to do whatever it takes even realizing that it's going to cost him uh, his life, uh, he's going to suffer. He, in, in um, I believe Galatians he, he, or Romans, he talks about a, a list of things that he's endured. He's been beaten with rods uh, uh, on three different occasions. He's received 39 lashes, uh, 40 lashes less one with a whip, at which many times people die from this, this type of a, a whipping. And he's endured that three or four times. Um, he's uh, been uh, stoned and left for dead that we just read about in a previous chapter here in Acts. He's, he gets shipwrecked. He, he gets uh, uh, snake bitten, uh, imprisoned. Um, all of these things uh, he suffers and yet he knows that all, it's all wor it's worthwhile to endure all of that if he can spread the gospel to the world. Uh, he never loses his uh, desire to tell his brethren, the Jewish people, about the free gift of salvation and that the Messiah that they look forward has come. It's Jesus Christ. He, he never uh, stops uh, and, and continues to be hopeful that the Jews will believe in Jesus but he also dedicates his life to going to the Gentile world and telling them this good news. And so he knows that this is uh, his um, purpose in life, And but it eventually it, it costs him imprisonment and execution. And so uh, verse 25, it says, And now, listen carefully, I know that none of you among whom I went about preaching the kingdom will see me again. For that reason I testify to you on this, our parting day, that I am innocent of the blood of all people. Uh, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose and plan of God. So in other words, he, it's like there's no blood on my hands. Uh, I, I, I never uh, failed in telling everyone I could about the shed blood of Jesus for the remission of our sins and the gift of salvation uh, when we put our faith in Jesus. He was never negligent. He never failed to tell everybody he could. And therefore, he with a clean conscience, he could, he could say that, uh, um, I am innocent of the blood of all people. In other words, if he didn't tell people about it, about Jesus, then he would be feel guilty that, well, perhaps someone could have been saved if I had just taken the time to tell them, if I had just been faithful to preaching the gospel. So he feels he has a clean conscience. He's, he's been faithful to preaching the gospel to everyone. Uh, For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose and plan of God. Take care and be on guard for yourselves and for the whole flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers <clears throat> to shepherd, tend, feed, guide the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. <clears throat> this is a great pr proof text here for the deity of Christ. Uh, it says that uh, the church was bought with the, the blood of God himself. And of course we know the, 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 the blood that was shed was the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the blood of Jesus Christ is the blood of God. So any of you who were unsure uh, or 
doubted that Jesus is in fact, in fact, God manifest in the flesh, this verse here should settle that. Um, verse 29. Well, let me go back to the KJV here to read verse 29. For I, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Um, also, of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So, verse 29 and 30 is uh, also prophetic. Uh, and this is the problem that Paul ends up having to deal with over the rest of his life and ministry work is to um, uh, continue to declare that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, with no religious works required. Uh, as it said in the beginning of chapter 15, uh, they, they are arguing that you can't be saved unless you're circumcised. Other people will teach that you can't be saved unless you're water baptized. Others say you, you must follow all the laws of Moses. Uh, others say, and Paul argued, I think, when he, I believe he wrote the book of Hebrews. No, you do not continue in doing the animal sacrifices in, in the Mosaic law because Jesus' his blood sacrifice, his death, was the final sacrifice that truly settled the sin issue. And therefore, you should not, don't believe that animal sacrifices are con to continue. Uh, so, uh, I've said this many times before, but Jesus and John and Peter uh, they made it clear that salvation is a free gift and it's not earned through re any religious works. Uh, and, but Paul, uh, he's telling us here that uh, verse 29 and 30, uh, this is the indication here now that uh, there's something else that must be said. Not only um, do you uh, not have to do any religious works to be saved, but, but don't let anybody deceive you into uh, believing a false message that salvation is uh, received as a reward from uh, a two-part formula, faith in Jesus plus establishing your own righteousness. Um, so he, he goes on in, in, in Romans and especially Galatians and Hebrews to, to, to teach us that um, if, if you divide your faith between Jesus and something else, then your faith in Jesus is is not pure faith. It's 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 not uh, uh, it's uh, meaningless. Uh, it's 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 worthless. It, it accomplishes nothing to put your faith in Jesus unless it's entirely on Jesus. Uh, if you divide your faith between Jesus and water baptism or circumcision or following religious rules, then uh, you're your faith in Jesus is adulterated. It's not pure, and therefore it has no value. It has no effect. You're frustrating the grace of God. You're nullifying the grace of God. So that's why it's very important for us now to continue standing up uh, for this idea that that um, your your faith must be, uh, you're saved by faith alone. No religious works are required, and also the faith must be in Christ alone. Your faith must be entirely in Christ. Do not think that you can divide your faith between your uh, Christ finished work, work for you and your own religious works, that they synergistically work together, that Jesus did his part and now you've got to do your part. You've got to change your life, repent of your sins, get sin out of your life, follow the commandments. He says if you divide your faith, then your faith is meaningless and grace is nullified. And so here we see an indication here that he's saying people are going to be coming into this church and all the churches he established and they're going to be uh, um, 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 blasphemy, committing blasphemy when they and uh, heresy, damnable heresy, when they tell you that Paul was wrong. Faith in Jesus is not enough. You've got to also get circumcised or whatever. The list, there's a long list of things that people 
uh, today are adding to, to the, the message that salvation is received by faith alone in Christ alone, plus A, B, C, D, E. You've, you've probably heard of so many things added to it. And so Paul says here, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Let me read verse 29 and 30 in the Amplified. I know that after I am gone, false teachers, like ferocious, ferocious wolves, will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Even from among your own selves men will arise, speaking perverse and distorted things to draw away the disciples after themselves as their followers. Uh, so these are, um, um, I think in Galatians, Paul, Paul refers to it as, um, I can't believe that you've been bewitched and you've fallen away from the, the message that he taught you, that Paul taught them. And uh, they've been deceived and to believe another gospel, a false gospel that can't save anyone. And that's the gospel that faith plus works save you. Uh, back to the KJV, verse um, 31. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one uh, night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. I commend you to God and to the words of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Uh, what accomplishes the grace of God? It's only because God is gracious. It's not because we deserve it, because we've been so good. We can say to God, oh, look, I've been so good. Don't you think I deserve uh, salvation? No, he says, it's only because of the grace of God. And, and it says, verse 33, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. Uh, Paul was very concerned that uh, some people were getting into the ministry as Christian ministers for the purpose of earning money, for profit, for material gain. Even we see this all the time now. How many of you have been angered and disgusted by the the, uh, the materialism that we see uh, in the churches in America, especially where uh, pastors are getting rich, and that seems to be their priority. And uh, so he wants to be sure that uh, not only is he not guilty of it, but no one could even dare accuse him of it because he continued working and being a tent maker and earning his own way. Um, he says, Ye yourselves know that these hands, Paul's own hands, have ministered unto my necessities. So he, with his own labor of his own hands, he provided his needs, his shelter, his food, his, uh, everything he earned through his hard labor, and to them that were with me. Uh, verse 35. Well, first, let me read that in the Amplified, though. Uh, we're starting with verse 32. Um, and now I commend you to God, placing you in His protective, loving care, and I commend you to the word of His grace, the counsel and promises of His unmerited favor. His grace is able to build you up and to give you the rightful inheritance among all those who are sanctified, that is, among those who are set apart for God's purpose, all believers. I had no desire for anyone's silver or gold or expensive clothes. You know personally that these hands ministered unto my own needs, working in manual labor, and to those of uh, the people who were with me. All right, so back to the KJV, verse 35. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all, and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should not see his face, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Well, that speaks for itself. They loved him dearly and uh, uh, were so sad and heartbroken that he was leaving them and, in fact, never to return to them. All right, so that ends chapter 20. Um, I will pick up with chapter 21 next time. And again, I urge you, uh, if you came across this video, I hope you will go back and watch the entire series on the book of Acts, chapter, beginning with chapter 1, verse 1. One of the most important books in the Bible to tell you the, the, the uh, history of the first 30 years of the church. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.